but Adams, founding owner of N.F.L.S. Titans, dies at 90. But Adams, the pro's football presence for more than half the century as a founder of the American Football League and the owner of the Houston Oilers and their successors, the Tennessee Titans, died on Monday at his home in Houston. He was 90. The Titans announced his death. The AFL began with two very rich Texans. Lamar Hunt, the Dallas-based son of the oil tycoon H.L. Hunt, conceived of a league that would compete with the established National Football League. He enlisted Mr. Adams, the owner of the Ada Oil Company of Houston and son of Phillips Petroleum's chairman, to join him. They announced plans for the AFL at a news conference in Mr. Adams's boardroom, then teamed with six other owners in what became known as the Foolish Club, the collective name embodying the formidable task of taking on the NFL. The new league, which began play in 1960, endured rocky financial times at first, but it thrived and merged with the NFL in 1970. Mr. Adams's death leaves Ralph Wilson, the founder of the Buffalo Bills, as the last NFL owner whose football roots go back to the A.F.L.S. creation. Mr. Adams, who, like Mr. Hunt, had been rebuffed in efforts to buy the N.F.L.S. Chicago Cardinals before forming the AFL, obtained his Houston franchise for the league's inaugural fee of $25,000. Forbes magazine estimated the Titans' value at $1.055 billion in August the 19th highest among the N.F.L.S. 32 teams. The Oilers won the first two AF Leader Championships, in 1960 and 1961, then lost to Mr. Hunt's Dallas Texans the predecessor of the N.F.L.S. Kansas City Chiefs in the 1962 championship game. By the late 1980s, Mr. Adams was complaining that the Oilers' home, the Astrodome, was outmoded, and he considered moving the team to Jacksonville. The Astrodome's seating was expanded with financing from a public bond issue, but Mr. Adams remained unhappy. After failing to obtain public financing for a downtown stadium, he moved the Oilers to Tennessee in 1997. After one year at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis and another at Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville, the team moved into a new, publicly financed stadium in Nashville, now called LP Field. The naming rights belong to Louisiana Pacific a maker of building materials based in Nashville. In their first season at the new stadium, when their name was changed from the Oilers to the Titans, they defeated the visiting Buffalo Bills in a wild card playoff game, scoring a final seconds touchdown on a kickoff return spice by lateral, a play that became known as the Music City Miracle. They went to Super Bowl XXXIV in January 2000, losing to the street. Lewis Rams, 26-19 after getting to the Rams one yard line as time ran out. Mr. Adams, a private man, was uncomfortable with public relations gestures, and he could display a rough edge. In April 1966, after all Davis was introduced as the new AFL commissioner at a Houston hotel, Mr. Adams got into a fight with Jack Gallagher, a sports columnist for the Houston Post who had criticized Oilers management. I called him a couple of names, then he said something back to me. Mr. Adams was quoted as saying by Jeff Miller in Going Long 2003 and Auto History of the AFL. I had enough by then, so I just went over and cold cocked him. Soon the two men were rolling on the floor. But was a big, strong guy, Mr. Wilson, the Bills owner, recalled. He was pummeling him. I was on top of Bud, and all Davis was on top of me. We finally broke it up. Kenneth Stanley Adams Jr. was born on January 3, 1923, in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, where his father ran Phillips Petroleum. He played in the backfield for the University of Kansas before serving as a Navy officer in World War I, I then settled in Houston in 1946 and founded Ada Oil. Mr. Adams' early Houston Oilers, wearing the logo of an oil derrick on their helmets and led by the former Chicago Bears quarterback George Blanda and the Heisman Trophy winning halfback the Lee Cannon were the A.F.L.S. premier team. Mr. Adams ran the Oilers and his other businesses from an office in which he displayed a collection of Western and American Indian art. He belonged to the Cherokee Nation as a descendant through his mother, Blanche, 